The tool that I'm going to dig into a bit deeper in this video has enabled me to quadruple my investment returns. I'm not joking. And whether you're a trader or investor and it's value investing or passive investing or stock investing or swing trading or day trading or whatever it might be, this tool is going to help you. It's going to help you increase your return. So I've done videos on this in the past and it's been extremely popular. In this video, I just want to deep dive on some of the features and just show you guys just a, around how you can use it in all different scenarios and really get the most out of it. So I highly recommend that you save this video to your watch later as well, because you're gonna wanna keep coming back to this. Also download this video as well so that you can watch it if you're out on a flight or you haven't got any signal and you've got one of those downtime moments where you can really absorb the learning, download this video. This is gonna be one, of, one you're gonna wanna keep. All right, so Forecaster. This is forecaster.biz and it's a very, very powerful investing and trading tool for traders and investors. And uh, I'll put a link in the description on where you can go and get this. Um, so that that's there. And <clears throat> just for the start off, you can see that it's a very basic familiar uh, site. In fact, you might recognize this from Google, right? So uh, Google is very, very similar. And uh, we, it looks similar to Google, right? It's a search engine. This is what I like about it. It's got the same icon up here for all of the kind of tools that Google has. If you click here on Google, you can see it's very, very, very similar, right? So it's very familiar. And the first thing to do is get signed up. So you're gonna open an account that's a free trial on this thing. And uh, you can get a free trial and there's no auto rebilling or anything like that. You actually have to buy the thing after your, uh, you know, your trial membership is up, which I like. We do that at tier one trading as well. No auto bidding. I think that just gets up people's noses. Um, so you can really try this thing out on a true trial without having to worry about your card being billed if you don't like it. Uh, I personally like that. Um, but first thing you're going to want to see is the pricing. Now, when it comes to pricing, there's not too much to know about this. Um, you basically get all the features with all of them. Um, it's just going to be slightly better value for money. So the monthly plan's £28 per month. Um, or that's probably going to be about, I don't know, 60, 60, uh, probably about 35 euros or something like that, $40, something like that per month. And then the quarterly plan is going to give you an 18 pounds saving. And then the yearly plan is obviously a massive saving of 120 pounds or 150 euros or some 160 euros, something like that at the time of this recording, uh, it's going to give you a good saving and with the bonus features for the yearly plan they throw in some um you know some courses some some educational material on how to use the cot report and things like uh trading strategies calculating intrinsic value and things like that so some extended extended investing material that you're going to get with that but from for it's a no-brainer really for the annual because it's you're going to get 120 pounds saving. It's still only 216 pounds for the year. And if you're if you're if you're if you're serious about this thing, right? If you're serious about this this path that you're taking, um, this is a no-brainer. It really is. It's it's just one of those tools that will. I, I'm, I can't say it will pay for itself, but I can go by my own results and the money that this one tool has made me. Uh, in the last few, couple of years or year and a half uh, has been a thousand X, 2000 X. I don't even know what it is, but it's <laughs> we've definitely got our, our money's worth. So once you know your plan, you want to sign up, you can sign up with your Google account. That's the easiest way of doing it. I'm not going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to skip and sign in now. All right. So once you're signed in, it will look like this. You'll have your little logo, your icon up here with your name. But really, the magic all happens here, right? This is this is the uh, this is the good stuff. So I want to go over all of this, but instead of like going into each thing and detailing each thing, I want to show you how to use this thing, right? In a in a real world scenario and in a real use case. So I am going to cover all of this stuff, um, but I want to show you it, you know, bit by bit and in context with how you might use them together. So the favorites, I'm gonna show you how to add things to your favorites and use this calendar feature. I'll show you that at the end. So make sure you stay tuned for that because that's a really valuable feature. Cot reports, I'm gonna show you. Break even, quantum screener. I'm gonna show you all this kind of stuff. Uh, and we might take a look at the courses at the end, but to be honest with you, there's uh, lots of educational material on my channel as well that you can go and watch. So first of all, 
search bar. Very familiar, like Google, right? So we can search for any instrument that we like, any market that we like. Uh, NVIDIA, for instance, I'm just going to click one that's already there. And it gives you, on the, on the first page, on the overview page, what you're going to see is this chart up here, which gives you the sales and net income, uh, price to equity, dividends, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. As you scroll down, you'll see the year's performance divided up by year. That's what these are. Okay, so this is a percentage growth uh, on the yearly performance. Um, then you've got the dividends uh, as an overview, and you can see that's nicely increasing, those dividends. Bit of a anomaly here. I'm always cautious of anomalies. I don't like anomalies. I like smooth trending um, patterns. And this is really good as well, this insider trading down here. What this means, it's not insider trading, it's insider transactions, right? So it's nothing illegal going on, but it does give you an idea on what the the members of the company are doing, the directors, the CEOs, the shareholders are actually doing with their shares. So you can see if they're purchasing shares or selling shares. And one of the interesting things here that you can see, one of the directors sold uh, a million shares recently, and there's a lot of shares being sold off recently. And that could be interesting for you when you're looking at maybe placing, putting more money into this market, right? So... If we go up to the top here, you can see the sales, obviously, and you can see the net income. And the thing I love about this, right, you can see the PE as well and the dividends, right? But the thing I love about this, having this on one chart, is it really gives you a good idea or a good picture of whether or not the share price, you know, the market price, uh, the stock market, is following the fundamentals of the company. Because a lot of the time, you know, you see the share price doesn't really match reality. It doesn't match what's happening under the bonnet. And having these two things on one chart, it shows you that look, you can see the stock price here, right, is following the, the fundamentals of the company. The net income, we can see that the actual, the numbers in the company are internally to the company, right, are matching the outside projected view of the stock shares. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. That's a good indication, and I'll show you where this makes sense in a minute because, look, at the moment, you can see that oh, – oh, oh, and by the way, this number up here, this most recent number, so you see see this number here. This is the trailing 12 months, so it's the last four quarters, and the great thing about that number is you can see how the year might end or the last 12 months might end, and you can see that at a glance, which is which is great. Um, and that's that's across the board as well. That's you can see the trailing twelve months on the PE as well. Um, but obviously, Nvidia is a bit of an anomaly, like I say. But if we go to PayPal, for instance, PayPal was one of the ones that I um, I did a video on on this channel. And if you haven't watched that video, you know that is incredible. I got a forty percent return in about six months on that, which was uh, crazy. And um, and it's still going up so um you know and i'll show you what i mean by that look so here you can see it follows fundamentals right if we look at paypal and we go to net income what you see is the share price is right down here but the net income is growing and growing right so what the, what that differential tells us is we've got a very very well performing company but the market doesn't know yet right so the stock price the share price doesn't always reflect what's going on in the company. And when you start to understand this, that's when you start to understand the the fair value of the company and, and the opportunities that lie in that business, right? We've got a company that's doing ex like well month on month, year on year, and yet the share price is still low or lower than what it was. So the market hasn't really caught up yet or the market doesn't know. And as you track down, you can see, you know, the same information. Um, seasonality up here. We know what seasonality is. Uh, I've done other videos on this, but I will dive into this in, in just a moment. Um, seasonality is where you can combine five years, three years, seven years, and check the average, the, the seasonality of movement in markets. Overbought, oversold is where you can look at um, undervalued and overvalued stocks as well. well. I'll take a look at that in a bit. The fundamentals page is like what you would see on, um, you know, MSN Money or Yahoo Finance or those types of um, websites. 
And it's great to have all this because on here, especially when you want to look at the average fair value, okay, you can look at these Altman Z score, the Petrosky score, the Benish M score. All of these are really important, and I'm going to go through this in this video. The Benish M score is how likely the company is to be manipulating uh, the earnings. The Petrovsky score is the strength of the company, and the Altman Z score is like the risk of the company going into financial despair, bankruptcy, and things like that. So having that on, so it's, that gives you a solidity. Um, and then under value generation, we've got some other weighted financials. So weighted is really important when you're looking at um, the performance of companies because the weighted average is taking into consideration, it's putting more emphasis on the most recent uh, times and still factoring in the less recent times, but giving it less weight. So you get a nice, stable and sustainable projection um, using weighted averages. If you haven't seen how you can use this um, in your trading, I did a video, my, my last video from this one actually, um, called How to Quit Your Job and Trade Full Time. And I cover weighted averages in detail there. And I also give you a tool where you can work out your own weighted average income that you would need to replace in order to trade full time. So go and check that out as well. Um, and then there's some really nice pool pie charts and things like that, right? You, you can kind of... Um, get the picture and you can click on these little information uh, tabs that share with you what it's all about. I want to show you how you can use all this stuff. And then there's a political tab as well where you can see all of the kind of news and numbers and uh, reports and things like that. Right. Okay. So if we look at the seasonality, uh, one of the features that was introduced quite recently uh, to this video was the correlation score. And what the correlation is, is it's checking um, how how correlated actual price the current price is with seasonality okay which is which is good because it's one thing to look at the overall seasonality across three years five years seven years 20 years etc but knowing where current price and how current price is behaving compared to seasonality is a is a different ball game so where this is like if i was to bring on the current price for instance you can see it's not quite moving as per the usual seasonality and where this is more prevalent is if we just go to the s p uh let's go to the s p 500 um what you can see is on the seasonality if we go to seasonality the price has moved like we've got the seasonality here which is obviously okay that's great but the correlation this september this year the correlation was not um, was not there. It was a low correlation. But if you use this tool, you would have known because you could have checked this and you would have seen that the current price in early September, you see here, um, it's it was it was the, the seasonality was very low. Um, but you could see that the price starts moving away from the seasonality. And you would have known that by using this tool because the there was a disconnect between the current price and the, the seasonality of, of that market, which that's really valuable. If you're using that to stay out of, you know, out of markets or out of investments or out of trades or whatever, uh, this can be really, really powerful. Now, speaking of correlation and consistency, consistency is the most important thing. And here's where it's going to separate the, the people who do really well using this tool from people who just kind of dabble and don't know what they're doing and they see something and they think it's a good opportunity and it's not right so here's an idea of how you might drill down and use this okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the quantum screener and one of the things that you might do uh this would is is to pick the top pick a market okay so that might be the s p 500 it might be some index um uh, or the yeah i'm going to go with the s p 500 just to keep it simple and what you would do as a as a great exercise here is look you can see these are the top three right these got 100 percent win rates that taking into consideration all the analysis that this quantum screener is doing it's providing you with a list uh, numerical list one to 50 of the top performing and the top three are obviously going to be the best 100 percent um, and you can pick one of these or you can pick all three of these, right? And you can do the same analysis. Let's go for Colgate. Everyone knows uh, Colgate, right? So we're going to click on this and it will open it out in a new tab. 
Now, bear in mind, I haven't picked the best one. This isn't rated number one, but we're going to look at this one anyway. And I'm going to bring on different seasonalities, right? So I'm going to bring on the three-year, the five-year, and the seven-year. Um, I'm going to bring on... Actually, we, we don't want to clutter it up too much, but you want to bring on a few seasonalities, okay? So three-year, five-year, seven-year in this case. And you can see it's really nice uh, seasonality. Now... What I like to do is look for consistency in these statistics. So I like an average above 70. Okay, so if you can look at all three seasonalities, add them up, divide them by three, and you're above 70%, um, that is a great score. Or some of you might like to say, well, I only like these numbers to be a minimum of 70%. Okay, and that's great. And if they are, then you move down to the next set of statistics, which is the trade statistics. And you can see that we're looking for a long in this case, right? And you can see three-year, 100% return. Five-year, 100% return. Seven-year, 100% return. If I was to take the trade from uh, this here, 28th of, of October, right through to uh, the end of January, 25th of January, 2025 in this case, uh, these are the seasonal um, statistics, and this is the correlation score with the current price. So... That's pretty good because it means that we're getting above a 70% um, seventy percent correlation with the price right now and the three-year, five-year, and seven-year seasonality. And then when we look down at that period in time, the trade statistics are 100% over three years, 100% over five years, 100% over seven years. That's pretty good. And if that's all good, then you can look for consistent average returns because the last thing you want is volatile fluctuations in the average return, right? Because remember, we're looking at time and we're looking at price so far. Well, if we're looking at um, 100% is the strike rate of that move, right? 73.5% is the correlation of seasonality with price. It's, it's not actually the return on your money. So now we can look at the return on money. And as I said before, the stock price and the like the intrinsic value and the, the the company fundamentals don't always tally up. So it's nice to know that there's no wild fluctuations in the average return. So I like to look for consistencies in the average return as well. Now you can see 7%, 5.5, 5.9. 5 this is a very, very good trade because we've got the consistency there in all three of those. Now, of course, we can drill down on this as well. We can go up here and we can say, well, actually, what about if we just took it to the start of January or the end of the year? Okay, if we go to the end of the year from um, next week, say, this will then just change everything because not only have we got 100% return, we've now increased the average return in ROI. Look, we've now got 10%, 8.7%, 7.6%. Nice, consistent average returns which is great i love to work on averages so by dragging this line here is how you optimize the trade setups now that's going to depend on how short term long term you want to get involved in the market in it depends what type of approach you're taking but how great to have that feature all on one tool it's amazing now that's one way to use the quantum screener i actually know someone who is using the quantum screener in a slightly different way where you don't have to do any of that work with the seasonality right they basically they come in and they say i don't want to do all of that analysis i don't want to look at the seasonality all i want to do is come into the markets each week i want to go to all instruments i want to pick the top 10 um i think they said the top 10 and they just buy, they do what that says, okay? So they'll go into here and they'll say, right, okay, this is short, this is long, this is long. So they will, they will short this and they will get long this one, right? So, so um, Segro, they'll go into Segro and they'll just take this trade that it lays out for them and they'll, they'll just go with this. And they do that time on time again and they are doing very, very well, but you have to appreciate that that's not everyone's personality. That's not every, first of all, you have to have a lot of money to do that. Uh, you have to have a large account. You have to really just, you know, have a strong appetite for this stuff. And uh, I, I highly recommend that you don't just take signals blind from any platform. I, I'm here to empower you around finances, and I hope that you're learning how to empower yourself around looking for opportunities and know why you're taking certain opportunities. But that's another way that you could lose 
the uh, the quantum screener that's that's been very popular as well. And the reason that works so well is because it just works on the law of averages on statistics. Okay, so if you've saw my video on how to have an edge as a trader, which just tipped over a hundred thousand views at the at the particular point of this recording, it's been wildly phenomenally popular. Uh, I explain how to beat the house, and that approach lends itself to that type of approach. I personally like to know what I'm doing and why. So I like to dig deep and find the opportunities, the best opportunities, and know exactly where my money's going and why it's going into it. Now, another powerful feature is this break even. Um, now, break even, if you have seen the stock market or seen IPOs, um, you'll see it's very common that when the market goes onto the public market, it starts to rally and then you find out that it doesn't actually make money and then it tanks and you'll see something called the wall street cheat sheet which is a chart that you can pretty much overlay onto any ipo any ico uh, and you'll see that it's the same pattern time and time again and it's basically a hype pattern so what you want to look at is when the market when the stock actually makes money a lot of people think that if a stock market if a stock price is going up the mark the, the company is really profitable and it's making loads of money spotify are one of the most well-known household companies right now, and they've not figured out how to make a profit yet. They have never made a profit. And I'm sure they'll get there eventually, but it's not what you seem. People, I've seen people go, Spotify taking people's money and profiting from artists and all this kind of stuff. They're not profiting at all. There's no profit in that business. And people don't understand this, and they think, well, that's a household name. I'll invest in Spotify. You want to invest in the company when it's making profit, when it's making money, because then you're getting in when the fundamentals match the stock price and or, or before that, so that you know that you're getting the best bang for your buck. So the break even score, if we just go to uh, US, because that's obviously everyone's familiar with, with the US uh, stock market. Um, you can see DraftKings is at the top. If you scroll down to the value investing section, you can see on the financials that they've just made their first profit. And that's good to know. If you can spot companies that have just gone into that real profit-making era uh, of, of, their, of their financial history, you can then start to come down and look at you know, the Altman Z score, the risk of bankruptcy, the Petrovsky score, see how uh, they're, you know, how stable the company is and how um, likely it is for them to be manipulating their earnings. And then you can take it from there. But that's another great way of spotting a great early investment opportunity where you can, you know, start to perform your analysis knowing that the company is now in profit. It hasn't been in profit, but it's now in profit. Now let's do the analysis on it. And that's the way that you can get in really early. That's why it's called a, a break-even score. You surpass break-even and, uh, and you're on your way to a good investment if you apply the other fundamentals as well. Now, speaking of drilling down on the fundamentals, this is where it pays to know some of these things, right? Because remember, we're looking for things that match uh, real opportunities. We're not looking for hype and fluff and over-exaggeration um, we're looking for undervalued and real solid companies. So the Benish M score, I just want to dig a little bit deeper on this because this is how likely it is that a company is manipulating its earnings. Now, recently, there was a company that specializes in looking at uh, short sellers, right, in the, in the market. So if we just go to Google and type in super micro uh, sh computer short, um, scroll down and you'll see something called Hindenburg Research. That's it. Hindenburg Research, they specialize in looking at um, people who are sh like short sellers. Okay. Now, you can see this is a whole article on Supermicro. It says there's fresh evidence of accounting manipulation. Um, and they did a whole study on this. They did a whole research on this, which you can go and read. But if we go back to um, the forecaster and we go to... Um, super micro. Now, if we go to the fundamental page and scroll down and look at the Benish M score, you'll see that there's a strong likely that was manipulating its earnings. Now, if we look at the uh, date on this, this was published on the 27th of August uh, 2024 for the previous uh, quarter. 
If we go over to here, you can see that this is the previous quarter. This was the previous quarter and the Benish M score is a minus 1.58. It says the company is strongly likely, highly likely to be manipulating its earnings. So the nice thing about this is, is this company here, this Heinberg Research, this is a company that specializes in finding companies who are manipulating earnings, basically. And with Forecaster, you have it without having to do all of that research or having to do any of that stuff, which is amazing that it's all on this one platform. Now, one of the best tools, in my opinion, on here is the rankings. And the reason being is, if we just go to the S&P 500, you get this really nice, first of all, you can, this chart's great, where you can see how uh, the allocations of that index fund is made up through different sectors and different assets, right? So we've got, uh, you've got all of the different, you know, 15.64% of the S&P 500 is made up of technology sector based companies, and etc. And you can see how it's made up. It takes into consideration all 505 of the companies in the S&P 500. And what it gives you is this fair value score in percentage on the entire index fund. Now, this is something that I haven't seen on any other platform ever, uh, because what they're doing is they're, they're they're taking all of the companies and the average fair value and they're consolidating it all and producing a using a formula to produce the total undervalued figure for that index fund. Now, why is this important? Well, if it's undervalued, it's likely that there's not going to be a market crash anytime soon. Now, of course, this this fluctuates daily, but if it's undervalued, the, the chances are institutions are still going to be buying this thing, right? They're not going to be looking to sell off if it's undervalued. So that's a great score to have at your fingertips as well. Now, if that wasn't enough, you can start to drill down. So if you go to the top 10, you're going to see that it's actually overvalued. Now, we know that the top 10% is going to be mainly made up of tech stocks. You can see here that we've got Apple, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Meta, right? And we all know that when things are getting a bit rocky or people put their money into tech because they feel safe, eventually the price becomes so high that then there's not enough value there and then there's no value in the stock price anymore. So it becomes overvalued, right? Now, if we can go out to the top 30, you can see that it's overvalued. If top 50, you can see it starts to become fairly valued. And then if we go to all stocks, you can see that if you if you're taking into consideration all stocks, it's 2.8 or 3% undervalued. But if you go to, you can also go to the sectors, right? So you can find out what sectors are undervalued, overvalued, and then you might just look at an index fund related specifically to those. Or instead of uh, going best to worst, right? Or you can scroll down here and just go best to worst. And this will give you the top 10, to, like this will reorder the top 50 uh, in to best to worst. So you can see here, what's really nice about this is it puts all of these scores at a glance in the table. I love things like this. There's the Z score, right? The Altman Z score, the F score, the Petrovsky score, Banish M score. You've got all of those things there at a glance. Now, one of the really interesting things about this is it, you might... Um, know this Ulta Beauty. This is the most recent company that Warren Buffett bought um, in Berkshire Hathaway. This was in this list weeks and weeks before Warren Buffett made the purchase of those those stocks. So now if we open up this particular stock and take a little dig in here, um, you can see that the average fair value uh, is 113.5% below the fair value. Okay, now we've turned off the discounted cash flow, which is is this because that makes it uh, a little bit more optimistic. But you can see that's a still a very very great stock. And then looking at the financials on here, you can see the ratios. Okay, so we can great ratios, profit margin very very high, the return on equity (ROE), uh, the debt equity. So you can see that the money's got actually more cash than it actually owes. You can scroll down, you see the Altman Z scores, low risk of bankruptcy, the Petrovsky score, very, very strong. The Benish M score, very unlikely to man be manipulating its earnings. 
If you scroll down, you can see the value generation, and this is shares outstanding, right? And share shareholders yield. So you can see if the company are buying back their shares, which is a, a powerful thing, right? So you can see as the time goes on, there's less and less shares outstanding here. You can see the company is robust, buying back its shares and rewarding its investors. This is what we like to see. We can see the shares outstanding are decreasing, yield increasing, weighted financials increasing, which is amazing. And if you click on the uh, little indicator here, you'll see that robust is the strongest like possible score, buying back shares, shareholder positive, uh, yield positive increasing, weighted financials increasing. That's that's a that's where you want to be. Now, when you click on shareholders yield here, a positive shareholders yield is great because here's why. A lot of investors, when they get into investing, they'll go up to a dividend yield and they'll see if the company's, like they'll type into MSN Money or Yahoo Finance, show me all of the companies that are giving a dividend yield. And that's how they make their uh, bias on what companies they're going to invest in, right? But when you, uh, one thing about dividend yield you have to understand is that when people invest in, when when companies pay you a dividend, you have to understand how they're paying you that dividend because a lot of companies, they issue new shares, right? They pay you in shares. So what they're doing is they're taking your money and then you're basically buying for, uh, you're paying with your own money for the dividend yield because they're diluting, they're, they're issuing more shares of the company. Does that make sense? So what the um, shareholder yield does, it takes into consideration the dividend yield plus net buyback yield plus debt pay down yield divided by the capitalization. And what that does is it will give you a, a nice figure to, to see that if it's positive, you know that the company are providing real value for you as an investor basically okay so you want to make sure that you've got a positive shareholder yield and it's not always the easiest thing to calculate and again we've got that at a glance at our fingertips here which is really really useful and then down here you can see the revenue by products to see which you know what their products what the line of products are and what's making up for the revenue and and how that's growing so that's a really great example here would be tesla so if you take a look at tesla and you scroll down to the fundamentals scroll down to this pie chart, uh, you can see that um, what makes up their revenue and what's, what particular parts of their business are growing. So if you look at the energy uh, generation and storage, for instance, you can see that that is growing and growing and growing, which is uh, really interesting. If you go to NVIDIA, NVIDIA obviously started off as a computer gaming company. But if we Go to the fundamentals of NVIDIA. Just a quick note on this. If you type in NVIDIA and you look at a stock, you can just go straight to the fundamentals by clicking uh, this here and it will take you to the fundamentals page. Um, so that's a quick shortcut. Anyway, if we scroll down, you can see that um, the data center is growing massively. Actually, for a company that started as gaming back in 2020, you can see that the gaming was 50% of their um, revenue by that product and now um, it's only 32 percent okay and the data center is growing it's it's the majority which is really really interesting right data that's where the money everyone says data is where the money's at that is a that is a picture of what that means now speaking of dividend yielding stock picking and all the rest of it if we go back to our um rankings and we go to the S&P 500, I already explained that you can check by sector, right? So you can go to uh, the healthcare sector and you can see you know, how that's undervalued, right? But another thing you can do, if you go to all stocks, if you are someone who likes to look at um, dividend yield, all you do is you go to the ratio, click on dividend yield, and you can see who are paying out the biggest dividends. So you've got these tabs here, value, ratios, momentum, um, the ratios one is where you're going to find who's paying the biggest dividends. And then you you might just start looking at your investments that way, top down. So the, the, the flexibility on this tool is just incredible. And, and the information that you've got at your fingertips that saves you so much time is uh, is so valuable and keeps you ahead of the game. This is how I was able to get in fast on uh, PayPal. And I'm going to show you another opportunity in just a bit. So lastly on this, the momentum tab just shows you kind of the best 
trading performance uh, over the last period of time, wh whichever you're looking at. So you can see the last year, the last three years, last one year, and it's going to shuffle these uh, companies based on th the most recent performance, the momentum performance. And also there's this best to worst button as well, which will do an average uh, of, of all of the stocks as well. So that's great. Okay, now an opportunity I want to share with you guys. Um, and we're going to take a look at some of the other features as well. And we're going to go to Lululemon and I'm going to go over to the overbought oversold this time uh, to show you a little bit about that. So overbought oversold uses two, th there's two different indicators here. Okay. And the Wyckoff causes an effect, uh, which is quite simple. It's, it's kind of like an RSI where you see price going down or, put, or getting lower and then the Wyckoff indicator going up, okay, that means that there is going to be, there is more buyers than sellers, which you can see that, uh, you can also see that this volume indicator as well, the volume spikes as well, which indicates that there's likely to be a change in direction. And in this case, we can definitely say that the number of buyers are exceeding the number of sellers. And the speed is kind of, is velocity. So imagine like the speed of a car, um, the, the speed of transactions and it's a similar thing, but it's the, it's the velocity of the, of the trades. Okay. Of the, of the transactions taking place. So again, you can see higher lows here and lower lows on price. It's likely that there's going to be uh, more buyers and sellers and, um, and there you see it. So it's the speed at which the price is go is dropping or moving. So here the, the speed of the car might be a uh, thousand miles per hour and the speed here might be 50 miles per hour, right? So it, it shows you the slowing down of those transactions. And when that happens, you know that the market's likely to probably turn around. Now, speaking of this company, if we go over to the uh, overview page and you scroll down, you can see that we've got directors purchasing shares. Okay. So they're buying back shares or buying shares in the company, which is a a promising thing. If we go to the fundamentals, if we go to the net income, you can see that the net income's growing and it doesn't reflect the share price. Okay, so we've got a good company, a really good company that doesn't reflect the price of the share. So the market hasn't realized this yet, which obviously is a great opportunity for people like me. And this is the type of company that I'd be looking at. Now, if we go to the fundamentals on this, you can see that we've got a very, very undervalued company, okay? 62.15% below the fair value. We can see that there's a very low risk of bankruptcy. The stock's strong on the Petrovsky score, and you can also see that it's very unlikely to be manipulating its earnings based on the Benish M score. The net income is also growing and growing and growing, and also the ratios are very, very good as well in terms of profit margin, ROE, and their debt to equity. Um, as we scroll down, the value generation, you can see the buybacks, very, very healthy. The weighted average is very, very healthy. The efficiency of the company is very, very good. And then if we drop down to the revenue by products, you can see that most of the products are geared towards women and women love buying cloves. So that's a great, uh, that's a great indicator as well. Now you can go up and you can check out the seasonality, but with all the other fundamentals in place, this isn't going to be uh, as important, but you can see that the, we're on a big bullish run uh, at the moment. Um, in my opinion, the most important thing would be this, uh, especially if you look out on a 10 year period, you can see that there's a massive disconnect between the price of the stock and what the actual company is doing. Uh, the, the stock market and the fundamentals of the company, there's, a, there's a, a massive opportunity there. Now, another thing is the COT report, okay? So the COT report, If we're, I'm going to do a dedicated video on this because I've had a lot of requests for it, but let's just go to the um, S&P 500, for instance. And if we click on the asset managers, you're basically seeing the institutional money and what they're doing, their positions, whether they're long or short. And you can see they've been long for the longest time. They are super long at the moment because they know that the S&P 500 is undervalued. Now, if you look back at um, 20, uh, 2021, 22, that's where they started to decrease. They started to close off their long positions, right? And start to sh sell off their positions. And uh, and that start that triggered a big trend, which then started to pick up again 
uh, around October 2022, about two years ago from the time of this recording. Um, so this gives us a good indication of, of where institutional money is. A lot of people seem to think that there's manipulation and stuff. But this, the, the, this COT report was designed to help us see transparency over what institutions are doing. So if you look what happened here at COVID, um, in fact, if we go out on the 10-year, you can see it, they were super, super long before COVID, right? Institutions were super long before because there was value there, right? It was undervalued. When COVID hit, there was a lot of uncertainty. Now, all of the positions, um, you know, it fell off a cliff, basically. And you can see the institution positions uh, and the price of the stock. Well, it was a very quick bounce back. Why was it a quick bounce back? Because the, the companies were already doing really well, right? So when when the COVID scare came and then everyone thought, oh, right, it's, it's not really a big deal. Um, you know, let's look at the companies that were performing well and get back, get our positions back into those. It was a very quick recovery and you can see the institutions were, were keen to get back in. So you can see what the institutions are doing using the COT report, which will give you, again, some added confirmation in your own investments. Let me know if you want a dedicated video on the COT report and I'll do that on this channel. Just type in COT report into the comments. Um, I just want to cover off something else, uh, which is, let's just go back to Lululemon. If you find one of these that are interesting to you and you want to wait and drill down a little bit more or you want to add it to one of your favorites, as you say, what you can do is if we go to the quantum screener and you find one here or you go to a particular stock and you do it there, right? You can go back to Lululemon or PayPal or whoever, um, and let's just say that you've done your analysis and you like the seven year and you like the three year and you've got the seasonalities on there, right? And you're really looking at this, which actually this looks like a, a great opportunity, Toho Co. Um, you can then, um, you know, you've optimized it and you, you're looking for short positions on this case, okay? Um, if you just click new favorite, uh, you can update your favorite as and when you, you change that. And then if you go up to here and look in your favorites, you'll see that that's there and you can just launch that straight away. So you can then basically produce your own watch list and have those in your favorites so that you can just scan through all those once you've done your analysis, which is really, really cool. Okay, and then lastly on this, if you go to the fundamentals, um, you can see that there's some dates here, right? You've got X dividend date, payment date, you've got next earnings dates. Uh, these are handy dates to, to know if you are following this particular stock or you're waiting to see what, what comes out. Um, or you're looking at manipulated earnings or whatever it might be, you just click on this calendar feature here and um, this will be added to your calendar. So when you now go to your calendar, you've got a populated calendar featuring all of your um, the things that you've put in here, right? So there it is there. We've got our Toho earnings on the 12th of January 2025. So you can populate this calendar. And then also when you click on this, you get the opportunity to add a load of notes, notes, about this stock and okay and you can add your own notes and hit save as well that's really really powerful okay and then finally when you go out to the home page that's what this is if you look up here you'll see all of your events this is your calendar at a glance and if there's events coming up in the next week it will show here um, if not it won't have any and it will also display your notes when you click on it. now if you go to your calendar you don't have to just add events that take place in uh, forecast you can actually use this as a calendar so you can say call with um, investing group okay you can hit save and then uh, when you go back to your home page you can see there's one event there and when you click on it it will tell you what that event is so really, really nice. Um, that's kind of an overview of some of the features that you can use. I hope it gets you excited about using this in terms of your investing, whether that's value investing, looking for intrinsic value, looking for some swing trading opportunities or day trading opportunities even. Um, I really recommend that you familiarize yourself with this tool. And if you want more videos on this, let me know in the comments. And uh, I'm going to be sharing some of specific stocks that I'm looking at as well using this tool. Uh, if you're interested in that, let me know and uh, I'll see you in the next one.